Good afternoon, people. Hey, good to see we've got some people coming in. Hello. Hello to you, Amanda. Just give me another 30 seconds. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, oh, I can see some more people coming in, so that's good. I was going to say it's looking like a bit of a small, small crowd today, but that's fine. We'll call this a intimate, intimate event, shall we? Right. So um, today's session, as you can see, is called "Lessons Learned from a Year of Using LinkedIn Full Time." Oh, let me get back. That's a good start, isn't it? Where are we? I'm getting lost already. Well, that's not my day. Right. So <laughs> second slide. Right. So um, as I say, with all of these, uh, this session is part of a it's a, it's a series that I'm running um, and everything is being recorded. So rewatch it on YouTube if need be. Um, if you have any issues with lagging, there are also alternative links in the chat. So you can watch it on YouTube. You can also watch it on Twitch if you need to, because I know LinkedIn Live can be a little bit temperamental. So. As I say, this is a this is a series. Um, we've been focusing each week on one of five core components of your business's sales machine. And as you can see here, they are mindset, market, message, medium, and method. Um, as I always say, please do attend as many of these as you can, um, or at least you know watch the uh, the recordings of the previous ones because each week sort of builds on on the concept that came before it. So, can you believe it? We're on week four. This is going really quickly. Um, so this is medium. We're looking at uh, the medium through which you conduct your sales activities. Uh, and in today's case, it's LinkedIn. So, 
just a bit of a preamble. Um, over, over the past several years, um, I would say, because I'm, I'm not a big social media user, to be honest. I use uh, Facebook Messenger to stay in touch with my parents. That's about it, really. Um, but LinkedIn, yeah, LinkedIn is definitely the platform I've used the most over the years. Um, it's only really in the last year that I'd say I've, I've consciously gone all in on LinkedIn, you know, in the past, I've, I've used it plenty, um, more in sales roles where I've been researching uh, prospects. Um, and of course, as we all do, I've used it as a job search tool in the past as well. But now it's uh, it's a it's a core part of my business now. You know, I, I committed to using this full time. Um, so I'm seeing great results from it. And I'm just hoping that there'll be some takeaways for you guys today um, so that you can use it to, you know, to get some business, get some clients yourself. and as a side note on this as well, um, there are loads of people talking about LinkedIn, LinkedIn services, lead gen services, appointment setting, they'll book appointments for you, all of this stuff. But just remember, and remember this as we're going through this as well, LinkedIn is just one piece of the puzzle if you want to grow your business, right? So it's all well and good getting in front of people. You could get, yes, you could use one of these companies, these lead gen companies, they're of varying levels of quality in, in their out uh, their approach to outreach. But you could use some of these guys um, and you may get in front of some potential clients or maybe some Zoom calls with potential clients. But it's just one piece of the puzzle, right? That's just the beginning of the sales process, the buying experience from the, the, the client's point of view. So, yeah, put effort and resource or whatever into generating leads. Yep, sure. But just remember these meaningful if you're getting meaningful conversations going with people they're gold dust so don't just wing it right think about beyond that point how you're going to have that conversation so we're not you know th that's beyond the scope of today's session but as i say linkedin lead gen one piece of the puzzle so just bear that in mind as we're going through this this isn't the be all end all of uh of your your sales machine shall we say so I thought uh, I thought we'd kick off by looking at some of the stuff that I see most people getting wrong on LinkedIn. And this is probably not fully comprehensive. Um, there'll be other stuff. You may even disagree with some of this stuff, but this is my take on it. Now, once we what we do is we'll look at some of the stuff that people get wrong and then we'll look at some possible solutions or alternatives to what I see as being quite common pitfalls. One thing I will say before we jump into this, I, I haven't put it in these slides, but statistically speaking, by far the most common thing that people get wrong is that they just don't really do anything on LinkedIn. They don't engage. They just passively scroll through their feed, um, don't really don't really post anything. Um, we'll, we'll touch on this in a bit anyway, because I, th I think that is a that's a key, a key issue. But we'll, we'll get to that at the end. So. Firstly, uh, no desired outcome. So a lot of people don't have, they don't really know what they're looking to get from the platform. Um, and th this is common in business, right? This is common in all of sales, marketing. We do activity. We have conversations with people. We, whatever, we make phone calls, send emails. We may even post some content on, on social, but we don't really sit back first and think about what we actually want to get from it. So we, we come onto a platform like LinkedIn, which is a professional network, as I say, without a clear idea of what we're really wanting to get or the flip side of what we're looking to contribute to a, to a conversation or to a, a, a certain market that we operate in. And of course, if you don't have a clear idea of what your desired outcome is, then how can you make a plan? You know, what, what does a plan look like if you don't even know what the end point is? Um, so without a proper plan, uh, activities become a little bit random, a little bit arbitrary, and there's not really a strategy underpinning any of it. And of course, inconsistency is the result, right? So, you know, if, if, if we don't have an endpoint, we might do, and we don't have a plan, then yeah, one week we might do a few posts, we might engage with some people, uh, add some connections, but then we fall off the, the radar for like two weeks after that. And it's just up and down, up and down in consistency. I think another thing people do here as well is 
I see a lot of people approach LinkedIn with this attitude of like, what what can I get from it? What can I take from it? And you see this in in the in the, the content that people put out. Right, every post becomes either an explicit sales pitch or just a very thinly veiled sales pitch. Um, there'll be like one or two lines of here's a common issue that people face and now buy my stuff, <laughs> you know, um, either that or people don't post at all. They don't contribute any any kind of content, any kind of value. And instead just end up sending out generic messages. I, I harp on about this all the time. As any, any of you that know me will know I talk about this. People just sending out generic messages, the old uh, pitch uh, or the connect and pitch request the connection request that just comes with a pre-packaged with a generic sales pitch and a lot of this is is very generic it's very vanilla stuff that isn't very targeted or personalized and it's just in the hope that someone will buy it right so yes we're here to build something yes we we like i say we have a or should have a desired outcome but you know, you you can't build a house without first laying the foundations and you need to bring the materials to the site, right? And ultimately, you need to be putting in some amount of labor, some amount of work. It's not just about what you can, you know, get out of that. You can't just endlessly dig the hole for the foundation without putting something in yourself. And I think a lot of this stems from a lack of patience. Um, you know, in, in recent sessions, I've talked about how a lot of business owners and salespeople focus way too much on short term results. Um, we we take shortcuts, right? We try to shortcut processes that really shouldn't be or can't be shortcutted because a lot of us, we want quick fixes, right? We want easy wins. Um, I don't know. I just, you, you just need to remember that this, as I say, LinkedIn is a professional network and although this is true of any any social media platform it takes time right it takes consistent quality activity to build something so yeah be patient so what are the alternatives or what are the solutions to some of these firstly what do you want what is your desired outcome you know think about this why are you on linkedin i mean yeah you want you want clients, right? You want to get business from it, but to get clients, what other steps do you, do, you know, do you need to take some other steps first, right? So do you need to uh, maybe think about sorting out your profile, maybe make that either look more professional or have a clearer message about who you help, how you help them, a more of a compelling value proposition, um, do you need to build your network out a little bit more and, and, and build an audience, uh, maybe part of that involves developing your personal brand, something that makes you stand out a little bit more for the right reasons. Um, perhaps one of the things you need to do is refine your approach, like how you approach people, the messages you send and how you communicate with people. So these are things that I, I guess you could kind of call sub goals, right? You have the ultimate goal of, well, I want to get X amount of business or I want to get new clients, but think about the actions that you you take on the platform and how each one of those either benefits those goals, like contributes to them or detracts from them. And once you're clearer on, as I say, your, your, your primary goals and your kind of sub goals or your desired outcomes, that's when you can start to build a bit of a plan and a strategy. <clears throat> and it's not, it doesn't have to be really elaborate. It's a really complicated plan. It could literally be as simple as just, figuring out some activity that activity levels that you could stick to so for example you know you might want to do four posts a week uh, and on top of that maybe comment on three posts of other people's posts per day um, and you if you want to grow your network you think right i'm going to connect with 10 people a day that th those things are achievable or you need to figure out what's achievable for you but that it's very basic. I'm oversimplifying it, but it's just a case of laying it out like that and figure out your plan and then commit to it. So you see this, <laughs> this post here, I, I put it at the start of the year, uh, put it out at the start of the year. And I said, right, I'm going to post every day. And this was my like my public declaration. So for some accountability, um, you guys have probably completely forgotten I posted this anyway. But um, for me, it was a way of putting myself out there and, and like I say, making a commitment to actually do 
this specific activity. Uh, I mean, I've missed I've missed a few days here or there. It's always going to happen, right? Um, I post less at weekends, but I'm I'd say I'm at least ninety percent, probably more, uh, on track. So I'm happy with that. You know, I, I feel like I'm. It's, it's benefiting me. It's definitely there's there's traction, um, and it's really coming from that consistency and showing up consistently. Um, so, you know, maybe if you do want to commit to something, declare it, right? <laughs> I do declare, you know, say it to someone who will hold you accountable or make a post about it, you know, whatever it is that is going to create that anchor in your mind that you so that you'll actually stick to it. And of course, consistency, right? So this is huge. Um, the example I just gave, I crunched the numbers on this, right? So I said four, po four posts a week, uh, three comments a day on posts and connecting with 10 people a day. And I did this based on a five day work week, right? So not doing weekend activities. If you do this over the course of a year, you will have made over 200 posts. You would have uh, made over 780 comments and you'll have an additional 2,600 connections, or you would have sent that many requests. Now, it doesn't mean they're all going to accept, and I, and I wouldn't expect a 100% uh, acceptance rate, but you get the idea, right? You, you could be in a very different position on the platform after three, six, 12 months. And this goes back to what I said in a, in a previous stream about the compound effect, right? It doesn't take long before you start seeing traction and you start seeing the effects of, of your consistent activity. Um, so even after you've got an extra 200 connections, right? If only a few of those people are consistently engaging with your content, that then goes out to their networks and then their network, you know, and you can see how it can grow. Um, quite rapidly if you're consistent with it. And of course, patience, right? So it doesn't happen overnight. Yes, the, the compound effect is a real thing. But uh, yeah, be patient. Um, accept that some of your posts are going to flop. Um, some of them will do better than others. Uh, I mean, I've noticed, for example, that my, my sales myths posts um, they generally do quite well. Um, I normally post them on a Tuesday. You would have seen one that I put out this morning. Uh, but there'll be others that will get four or five likes and no comments. Like, but I'm, you know, I'm fine with that. That's just how it goes. Uh, so I'm trying to be patient with it. And the same goes with connection requests as well. Some people are going to ignore it. You know, you'll. <laughs> I see people posting about this. Actually, you'll you'll send a, a request, a connection request to somebody, and then you'll see that they viewed your profile, but they didn't accept the request. It's like that's harsh, man. But <laughs> you just have to, you just have to accept it. It's fine, you know. Rejected, but you know these things happen. Uh, as I said before, as well in a previous session, you know, in sales we have to accept that we're as uh, Michael Humblet says, we swim through a, a lake of rejection, you know, and we just have to. Just have to get used to it, right? Water off a duck's back. Okay, so three types of LinkedIn user. And by the way, I had some feedback on um, one of the sessions last week. Apparently, I was slurping my cup of coffee, so um, I'm, I'm not drinking coffee during the stream. I might have a sip of water, but no, no slurping for you guys. So I hope you appreciate that. Okay, so... I've noticed three types of LinkedIn users. Now, there's, there's probably more than three, but this is just my quick take on it, right? So I call them the forager, the farmer, and the gardener. None of these are, you know, inherently good or bad, but I think each one has its own characteristics and its own behaviors that will determine the outcomes that, that kind of, that type of person or that type of user is most likely to uh, achieve or, or not achieve. Now, I've put some videos in here, so I'm hoping that they, they run nicely. But uh, here we observe the forager. Now, the forager, is that loading? Oh, I don't know. I'm hoping it's not lagging. There we go. The forager, right? The forager is focused on what you can get in the short term, right? So low-hanging fruit, quick wins. Um, it's, it's said that in any given market, there are usually is usually only about 3% of the market that are currently ready to buy, right? So they know that they have a need. Um, they're actively engaging with suppliers and they're, you know, they're ready to buy basically. <clears throat> so the forager 
is really focused on that tiny little slither of the market. Um, sliver of the market, I should say. Uh, most of his posts are trying to sell something. And you see this with people, right? There, there'll be people in your feed that pretty much every post they put out is a sales pitch, right? Or it's it, and, and it's just repetitive. Um, and, and, and when the forager connects with someone, it, either it comes with a pitch or very quickly segues into, oh, I do this. I do, you know, here's my products and services or whatever. Do you want to book a call? Do you want to, here's my Calendly link or something like that. So the forager is all about getting what he can from his network or his existing network and moving on and just, you know, rinsing through people and, and surface level relationships and putting out these, these pitchy uh, posts all the time. And yeah, the forager might get some short-term wins um, might find some goodies buried under the sand there, whatever it is. Um, but I, I sense that this is kind of an unsustainable approach beyond just the short term, right? Because no one likes the connect and pitch, you know, LinkedIn request with a pitch. Um, and you, you do see that the, the, the people that put out posts every other day that are just selling something, they don't usually get a lot of reach or engagement on their content, right? Because they're not driving a conversation. There's not much value there. Um, and, I you know, maybe I shouldn't say that because they may be getting people that are clicking through onto their whatever it is, their website or their landing page or what their offer is. Um, and those client, those customers just aren't engaging with the post itself. So, you know, i I'm open to a correction on that, but you do see that they're not really building a traction in the platform engagement, as I say. And <laughs> I think this stems from the fact that we don't really want our feeds filled up with ads, right? You don't want to just be scrolling down your LinkedIn feed and just seeing ad after it, because that's what they are, basically, they're ads. Another video, is that going to load? Yep, so next we have the farmer. Now, the farmer, I guess he has kind of an agricultural approach, shall we say. So um, the farmer paints with really broad strokes. Um, and as we can see in this clip, it's it's agricultural, but it's monocultural, right? So the messaging is often repetitive. It's impersonal and, you know, it just flogs the same dead horse over and over with this kind of spray and pray approach. and. I'm really, really mixing up my metaphors here. So I hope you guys are staying with me, but it's kind of akin to putting, uh, you got a fishing hook, right? You put your fishing hook in the water and you're just hoping that there's a fish out there that A, is in that specific part of the river, B, is hungry right now, like has a need for, for something, and C, knows that hooks usually have worms on them or come with worms. Like, I don't know, it's probably not the best analogy, but basically what I'm saying is the, the farmer keeps spraying out that same message over and over. Um, so they're hitting that that three percent of the market that are ready to buy, but they are also, I think, when people come into the market and now they're ready to buy, yes, the, the the farmer might be on their radar as well, but there just isn't a lot of value being added along the way. And can I pause this video? There we go. Um, nope, that's not pausing. Um, yeah, and, it, and it's just not doing much to serve the people that aren't aware that they have a problem. They're not aware of an opportunity that, you know, he can help them solve or with an opportunity he can help them, you know, realize the some benefit, some achieve some goal or whatever. And finally, we have the gardener. <laughs> I'm just going to pause this because I'm not sure if the, the videos are making things lag. So let's pause that, right? But this is kind of like the horticultural approach, shall we say. So, um, you know, cultivating a garden, growing a garden is, is, is very time and labor intensive, right? So if you look at these people in this clip, they're planting saplings or seedlings by hand, like one by one. It's not this broad sweeping strokes. It's, as I say, one by one, right? So these are the relationships that you're nurturing as a as a, a LinkedIn gardener or horticulturalist, shall we say. Um, and this, this is like, this is your audience. This is your tribe that you build. And you build this by focusing first on value, value, value um, in everything that you do, right? In, in, in your one-to-one engagements, in your posts and messages you send and so on. 
Um, so beyond just content, the gardener makes their messaging relevant and personalized, right? So if they're reaching out to somebody, it's not the generic rubbish that you see and that you probably receive all the time. It's the, they, they do a bit of research, right? They understand the person that they're contacting first. And doing this means that they are seen as, yes, an expert in their field, but also a trusted advisor and not just a seller, right? So people, if, if, if there's this perception of them, then people don't mind engaging with them because they know they're not going to suddenly be hit with a crude like template sales pitch like, oh, hey, I saw you liked my post. Do you want to buy this? <laughs> you know, it, 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 there's a bit more maturity to their approach and when you have a mature garden you can pick stuff from it right without damaging it without destroying it you can pick you know go and grab a few apples off the tree or you know cut some some lettuce and it might even grow back you can pull up a few potatoes as you need them what i'm saying is these are the relationships that you've nurtured right it takes time but you're developing human connections rather than just this like transactional robotic and sometimes automated interactions so um yeah a bit, bit experimental on the conceptual side with this stuff but um I'm, I'm hoping that some of that resonates with you guys so you know a question for you which of these three linkedin user types are you or do you want to be um being the gardener sounds great, right? But it does require the most work, the most patience and so on. So it's not for everybody. Okay. Inbound versus outbound. So just wanted to touch on the you know being clear on on because i'm always about i'm all about outcomes right and thinking what why am i doing what i'm doing what do i want to achieve with this and with what you do think about is this an inbound or an outbound activity so am i trying to attract people to me or am i actively going out and reaching out to people i think a lot of people are really focused on the inbound stuff so posting content uh commenting on things because it's a little bit more and I, again I, i'm open to correction here but i i think it's it's easier it's more com uh, it's more comfortable for a lot of people rather than reaching out to, to new people messaging them you know the, the the effort to come up with some personalized message and connecting and, and putting yourself at risk of, of that rejection or that 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 pushback that rebuttal or just being ignored generally so <clears throat> think about as i say posting commenting to some extent is is a is inbound it's about generating interest in what you do and pulling people towards you versus outbound which as i say is messaging connecting with people and so on they are different things but they overlap right so they support one another so if you have a strong pro a, a strong profile people are going to be more likely to respond to your outbound messages uh, more likely to accept your connection request because they're going to go on your profile they're going to see nice you know, professional picture, nice header image, which they can at a glance see what you do. Your headline is, is clear. Your about section has some as something that's beyond just the generic sort of default text that LinkedIn puts in. And also, if you engage, say you engage with other people's content, right, they're more likely to reciprocate. So they, like I say, these things support each other. Um, the more content, uh, sorry, the more people that you connect with, uh, the more your, your network and your audience grow, the more mutual connections, right? And that spider web thing, your network starts to grow. So yeah, they support each other anyway. So I suppose the two, the two key points from that is just to think about the different, different types of activities that you do and the outcomes that they're contributing to um but understand that they support each other and you know you can have one without the other but i i just feel like you're missing a big part of the equation if you're only focusing on one side versus the other uh so that's that inbound versus outbound um right another thought so a bit of a follow-on i suppose i i like to think of my profile and everything that I do on LinkedIn as kind of a funnel, right? It's a funnel towards a particular action or my favorite word, outcome. <laughs> so an action that I'd like someone to take or some outcome I'd like to achieve. So in my case, 
it's at the moment it's to lead people to my featured section on my profile and on there there's calendly links you can book a coaching session with me in you know whether it's a sales coaching uh, linkedin strategy session or whatever um for you it might be something like a discovery call um maybe you want to pull people towards a website or a landing page or like a sales page maybe you've got uh, some kind of digital product like a course or an ebook that you want to sell right so get clear on that and again 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 understand your desired outcomes right so what do you want now finally to finish off uh, i want to share a statistic with you uh, that should if you understand it fully, it was going to get your heart racing, your, your pupils are going to dilate, you're going to get sweaty palms. <laughs> um, it's, this is a really exciting statistic, I, I think. Um, but first, I just want to break down a couple of numbers. So as of September last year, LinkedIn has around about 800 million users worldwide. Um, I'm not sure on the monthly usage, but daily, about 40% of those are, are, are daily on, on the platform. Um, so that's that's about 320 million people every day on LinkedIn. Um, weekly, monthly, uh, you can find those numbers. I, I didn't for this, but it's, I think it's, it's going to be a fair bit more than that if you look at monthly averages as well. But going back to that 800 million... How many do you think regularly post content and really actively engage with the platform? Um, and, and seriously, put this put this into the chat, right? What percentage, bear in mind there are 800 million global LinkedIn users. What percentage do you think are really active and, and post content on a consistent, regular basis? Tell me, tell, tell me what you think, guys, just quickly. Do you think it's 10%, 20%, 30%? Come on, Amanda. I think you might know this, actually. Anyone? I think the guesses might be. Oh, here we go. 10%. You think 10%. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll tell you. 1%. 1%. Right? So, um, Marlena says seven to eight percent. No, no, one percent. So, only one percent of LinkedIn users are like consistently, actively engaging, posting content. I mean, it's, it's nothing, right? And and bear in mind how many, how many of this one percent? Because we can break this down further. Like how many are actually posting decent content, meaningful content that people actually find valuable? Because in this 1%, that's going to include people that have put out the, the, the generic sales pitch stuff that we talked about. That's going to include the the, the, the gardeners, the farmers, and the um, the foragers, right? And, and also, what about video? Like break this down by video, carousels, like slide you know, slide decks um, or LinkedIn lives like I'm doing here. Like how what percentage of, of LinkedIn users are doing this on a consistent basis? And the reason I bring this up is think think about it. The, the gap is huge. There's a massive gap there that exists, I, I think, right? Yes, exactly, Amanda. Wow, good. We've got some enthusiasm going on here. <laughs> um, so... What I'm saying is for every competitor that's in your space that's posting regularly, there's probably another 10 or 20 that are either completely absent or they're inconsistent or, frankly, they're just posting garbage every day, zero value. So I genuinely believe that there's a massive opportunity for, for those of you that are willing to put the work in and show up consistently. Um, you know, why do you think I'm doing these 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 LinkedIn lives? Right. Because there just, there just aren't that many people doing it. I'm not saying that no one's doing it, but you understand, right? There's there's clearly a gap there, um, and I'd say there's there's not much stopping you from sitting down, taking the time to, to to list out some topics that you feel confident talking about, so that you can do the same thing. You don't have to do live. You don't even have to do video if you don't want to. But just consistently showing up, putting yourself out there, and and uh, yeah, delivering value to your tribe, and 
if no one else, if no one shows up like to your lives or no one engages with you, with your content or whatever, then at least you're building up a library of content over time. And you can, you can share this with potential clients down the line or whatever. So whatever you post, I would say, just find some, some way of, of, keeping it in a repository of content, right? So I keep a couple of documents um, on my laptop. Uh, one is just ideas that I can I can dump in there and then flesh them out at a later date. Uh, and another one is content that's either been, been posted or whatever. Um, and these, as you know, these live sessions go on YouTube as well. So yeah, they're basically there for perpetuity. So yeah, I, I, I hope that gives you guys some some ideas um as amanda says here she needs to get her derriere in gear so um yeah <laughs> good stuff good stuff right so we'll do um we'll do q a in a second i know amanda did post a question um a little higher up in the chat so we'll get to that in a second so look i, I don't normally end these things with a an offer of of my own but if you do want to grow your business on LinkedIn, um, but maybe you do want a bit of guidance, you you know, you're a bit scattergun, I'm sure. I do um, social media, I call them supercharged sessions, LinkedIn supercharged sessions. So basically we take 90 minutes, um, we'll do an overhaul of your profile and build your content strategy out. Um, I can give you some advice and tools to help you brainstorm ideas, schedule, pump, uh, schedule posts and lo loads of other bits. And, you know, you can pick my brains on some stuff as well. I've had some really good feedback from clients on these so far. Um, yeah, it's been great. So yeah, check it out. Um, link will be in the chat in a second with uh, with some more info. So that's that's me done. Um, right, questions and comments. So, hey, oh, thank you. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Good to see you. Right. Oh, and Amanda also says, I think I may be a farmer. <laughs> good, good, good. Right. So Amanda said, is posting every day ideal? So many people say so many different things. I've been told in the past that three a week is plenty. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it's about consistency, right? But it's about volume as well. You know, you want to balance out what is sustainable for you with the actual quality of what you're putting out and and quantity and the overall volume right so if you can post every day i don't think that's a bad thing um I, you know i could talk about the algorithm and stuff like that you know i don't like to to harp on about the algorithm too much because i think they probably change it from time to time i'm i'm not really an expert on that side of things so it, that's not really my my space and i, I shouldn't really uh you know I'll, I'll stay in my lane but what i would say is if you can post every day great um if you can't don't sweat it but i would just say I, I don't think less is more i don't i like that's that's why i committed to posting every day because i just feel like the more i show up the more i'm there i become a mainstay in the eyes of of my audience of my network if now if i was to pull to scale that back and only do a few posts a week would i still be in people's minds yes um maybe a bit less so uh, i i don't know i don't think it's a deal breaker if you only do say three a week because those three posts a week if they're like really really like top notch then then great um so i i don't know i don't have a black and white opinion on that uh, i think it's something you need to figure out like i say balance out what you can commit to consistently and still achieve a, a, a certain level of quality, yeah, but while still actually doing enough. Um, yeah, I could ramble on about that, but yeah, I, I, it's, it's not black and white, I don't think, so. Um, oh, and Marlena, thank you for putting those, those links in. Appreciate that. Um, so Amanda, while, while, you're, while you're here, um, th does that help at all? One thing I will say on the on the algorithm side is I have I have read that <clears throat> I did hear so I read someone saying that it's actually better to either post pretty much every day or maybe like once a week. There seems to be a 
when it comes to reach and LinkedIn boosting the reach of your of your post, there seems to be a kind of like a novel novelty booster effect where if you haven't posted for a long time or a while, they'll give you a bit of a boost. Um, I don't know how true that is. Um, you do see people that will put out a post and say, this is my first ever LinkedIn post. And they get like a thousand people engaging with their, you know, thousand likes and 500 comments or whatever. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I don't really obsess over these things because yeah. Um, as you say yourself, it's about finding your groove. It's about finding a rhythm that you can stick to, and, you know, come in the delivering quality on a consistent basis. So, um, are long posts still relevant? Do you mean like long form text posts? Because yes, I, I, I believe they are. Um, I have, I can't remember the specifics, but I have seen data to back this up as well. They do get good engagement. And I do, I know just from the people that I follow that, yeah, um, some, some, you know, some topics are, are nuanced, right? And, and you, you can't just throw out a, a, a one liner or a, just like two short paragraphs and explore a, a topic in, in much depth. So yeah, absolutely. Um, but what I would suggest is, and this goes to anything for anything that you write, whether it's a blog post, a sales email, a message to someone, write it out and then reread it and see where you can trim it down. Some, sometimes you'll find yourself putting in filler words and just superfluous stuff that doesn't need to be there. Um, who it was it? What's the, the saying? It's like, is it a Mark Twain? You know, I, I didn't have the time to write you a short letter, so I wrote you a long one instead, right? Because you have to circle back and, you know, trim it down and edit it. So yes, they're relevant, but long, but not long-winded, if that makes sense. Not that I'm not that I should be saying anything about people being long-winded, of course. <laughs> so anybody else? Any other questions? Any other comments? Did you guys find this useful? here for a few more minutes. Okay. Okay, people. Well, I think that probably wraps it up then. Uh, so thank you. Um, like I say, if you need help um, booking a, a super <laughs> Amanda's laughing for some reason, um, Oh, that must be what I said about being long-winded, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, no comment there. Um, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Uh, so, yeah, hope that helps. Um, as I say, if you want to book a, a session, uh, there's the links in the featured section of my profile or Marlena kindly put it in the chat um, or any questions or whatever, just drop me a message. Always happy to help. So thanks for watching. And tomorrow I'm going to be back with the wonderful Farah Hussein. Um, we are going to be looking at, what do we call it? Behind the scenes of, of networking or behind the scenes of business networking, which is something that Farah knows all about. So um, yeah, be there. It's going to be an awesome session. We've got some really good topics planned. So uh, yeah, thanks again. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers. Bye-bye.